My name is Nancy Singbach. I am the principal of PS51 from 2002 to 2017, 15 years. I sort of had no choice in my life because I'm the eldest of six children. Ever since I was a little girl, I was always organizing, thinking of activities for my siblings. We grew up in the Lower East Side and I'd have all these little excursions and field trips and bring them, you know, sort of make up all kinds of things. It just seemed to be destiny as far as I started working in daycare centers and then I was in special education. And I just love seeing children learn. I just get very excited about something they felt passionate about. It started at a very young age that I wanted to be an educator. I love starting the day with, with all the children. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. It's happy Friday. Who's not happy? I'm happy. I am happy. It's happy Friday. Well, I'm happy. Well, I'm happy like a grown man. Oh, I'm oh. happy like a grown man. Wow, me That's too. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day, so we're going to be lining up outside in the schoolyard. It's, it's wonderful to start the whole day together. I feel like that really brings us together as a community. So I'd say that's like one of my favorite times of day. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Okay, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. We have so many wonderful things happening today. We are such an incredible, wonderful community. Everyone here really cares about one another. I mean, the, the, the students, the teachers, the parents, um, all the staff members, we take good care of each other. We really honor one another. We celebrate together. And of course, we have talent show tonight. Raise your hand if you're coming. We really respect each other. That is a very, very beautiful quality of the school of PS51. Indivisible with liberty and justice for all. God bless America, land that I love. There is nothing that prepares you <laughs> to be a principal. I sort of felt like everything, I mean, I felt the burden, the responsibility, that everything was on my shoulders. So when I came here, I just assumed like I had to carry all that. And I said, oh, no, 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 I, can't, I won't be able to survive. I just, it's going to be impossible. Okay, let's go to first grade, Miss Drita's class. Good morning, boys and girls. I knew the person that I had to get was Kathy Myers Jusko. My name is Kathy Myers Jusko, and I have the honor of having put up with Nancy Singbach for 30 years. We started out as teachers, colleagues uh, in District 1 on the Lower East Side, where we worked together for 11 years became friends during that time, and learned how to run a school, even as teachers, and Nancy's gonna know what that means. We both went into administration, so I knew that she was the person that I needed. When Nancy got the job as principal at PS51 and brought me along as assistant principal, she was now my supervisor. <laughs> and so we had to really figure out how that worked. So as soon as she came on board, we became the dynamic duo, an incredible, strong team. The best way that we came up with was that we would work together as a team. And we ran the school successfully for 14 years together. I think that's the way we played it, and that's really um, a remarkable thing when the two of us reflect back on that. I'm forever indebted to her. In 2002, it was a very different place. About 95% of the students were below the poverty level. It was always diverse, but I'd say really much more Hispanic. And it had a very bad reputation when I first came. People were like, ooh, you're going to PS51? <laughs> Our school, which was 105 years old, the old school building, we were located on this lot that there was nothing else. There was a, a parking lot 
for the Intrepid. There was an abandoned paper company on 45th Street between 10th and 11th, and the famous Hess gas station. That was it. Oh, how can I forget? The horse stable. The horse stable was adjacent to PS 51. The first few years that we were in the old building on 45th Street, we started to realize that some of the arts initiatives that Nancy wanted to bring in, we didn't have enough room for those. The cafeteria was a multi-use cafeteria. We would have plays there, we would have assemblies there, we would have PTA meetings there. The tables had to go up and the tables had to come down, you know, for the kids to eat and there was a lot of, it was just, it was a strain. The building we were in on 45th Street was over 100 years old and didn't have a lot of the modern facilities, if any, a modern day school needs. And nutritionally, we wanted to have better kitchen facilities, but we also wanted to have more facilities for the arts. We needed a gymnasium. We needed an auditorium with a stage, a rooftop garden. I mean, all of these things were dreams that we had. What I'm most proud of is the fact that we were able to carry on the fight that the Hell's Kitchen community had started years before to have a brand new school. So then began the big adventure, and the adventure was one that I think very few schools have ever had to go through. And they identified a site for us all the way across town on 91st Street and 1st Avenue, and that was the only option we were given, so we had to live with it. And then we came back and tried to figure out how we were going to get our kids there safely, how to set this whole thing up. It was, it was busing the entire school, not just a few kids. Nobody in the DOE really knew, knew what to do. I was appointed bus coordinator by Nancy Singbach and, and uh, with the help of a wonderful teacher coordinator, and I'm going to mention Shelley Grant, Miss Grant, uh, who came up with a wonderful system to log the kids on and off the buses every single day. For two years, we all worked together and we got everybody over there safely without incident and uh, got everybody back home safely at the end of the day. So, you know. That was it. <laughs> when I came here 15 years ago, I said, wow, this is incredible. All the different cultures that we have here. Albania, Puerto Rico, Japan, India. Health Kitchen native. <laughs> cool. I love it. Montenegro, Philippines, Guatemala, Ecuador, Korea, Korea, China. I mean, from all over the world. And I wanted to share that about myself, and I started Chinese New Year's being half Chinese, and that became a tradition. And from there, it's just grown over the years. We had single de Mayo carnival where all the families came in all dressed up and brought food and then we had mariachis and then we had the um, Bengali families said well we'd like to do New Year's so I said sure okay whatever <laughs> so we'd say they came and they also brought their food and, and it turns out that all the children it's something within their culture that they all learn poetry we had the entire school assembled and they just kept on passing the mic talking about five-year-olds all the way up to six seven eight they all knew poems in their language. So they were sharing that and it was just incredible. I feel that we really model learning ourselves. We have to be learners. I had two parents approach me, not knowing that they were actors, saying, we want to put on a production here. They had a contracting business. I said, don't you do carpentry? They said, no, we're also actors. I said, okay. They said, we want to do Peter Pan. And then the father came to me and said, well, we, we have a special role for you that we want you to also perform in the play. And I said, what role is that? He said, we want to be Captain Hook. I said, what? No, 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 I can't do that. Oh, this is interesting. In addition, it is mandatory that what does not become irresistibly drawn is the Uranus belief that one can reason that one can trust that you're welcome, utterly welcome in his jaws. It's much more reasonable to, to assume that he's contemplating how you would look in a lizard suit. Yes! <laughs> and that was really outside my comfort zone. He said, but you're a principal. I said, no, I haven't done much acting or anything. So, I mean, really, I was along with the students, learning with them, 
I mean, right there in the trenches, and it's something to, for all of us to share that kind of experience together. For myself, I realized, you know, when I want the children to learn about the Hudson River or all these project based, I was experiencing it firsthand myself. And I said, you see, this is something I'm never going to forget. And that's why I believe in the way that children should learn. This school is positive, positively addicted to the arts, which I have to say is a passion of mine. I mean, when we came 15 years ago, there was one art partnership, and that was ballroom dancing. It's just, it's mind boggling now, as far as that the art partnerships that we have at the school. I mean, we have, to me, the most outstanding music and art teachers in the world, actually. that I love my art program. But as the years have gone by, I absolutely love my fashion program as well. Because they have created this comprehensive arts education program. And then it's, it's sort of enhanced by so many other art partnerships that we've been very fortunate to bring to our school. We have the New York City Ballet, we have Teachers Writers Collaborative Poetry Program for first and second graders. There's different lines from the students of their poetry. So over here it says, you hear me whisper, right? And then you have to look for them because they're all hidden over here. Like over here we have, uh, we can jump on a trampoline of the mysterious words. Beautiful. So this is right from our second graders. Who are the second graders? Come over here. And what are some different um, devices you learned in poetry? Onomatopoeia. Onomatopoeia. Alliteration. Alliteration. Uh, apostrophe. Apostrophes. Personification. Right? Personification. That's all funded through a benefactor, Inc. Financial, that I was able to develop that partnership with her. And at the same time, we have a more and more active PTA. They're very creative as far as trying to get funding for the other programs that we have here. Nancy comes in here, she watches my lessons, she participates in my lessons, which is awesome because the kids see her making music, they see her playing the guitar, they see her singing, and they see that they're principal. The person who runs our school is a musician just like them, which is amazing for them. Everyone knows that children can express themselves through the arts, through visual art, through music, through dance, through theater. And here at PS51, that is part of our mission, and that's because of Nancy. And our children, children who would not normally uh, maybe be, would not receive all the accolades in math or in reading or in science, you know, some of those students who struggle in places that, um, uh, in, in some of the academic classes, those children are lifted up here, they are empowered, they are they are able to see their worth. They are able to feel like they contribute to our school, to their class, to our school community. And it's all because Nancy has this amazing vision of holistic learning. When I started here at PS51 10 years ago, I was very excited. Uh, to start an arts program, but the one thing that I think that Nancy has done for me throughout the years has allowed me to be exactly who I am as an art teacher in my space and allowed me to kind of, you know, just run with my curriculum and create a curriculum that I think would best suit our students. She's just allowed me to really develop a program that has been very inclusive of arts integration the students here at PS51 receive the most holistic arts program possible. And so I'm super thankful for her because without her leadership and her uh, desire to want her staff and specifically like arts clusters to grow, uh, I wouldn't have had the opportunities and the motivation uh, to kind of take the paths that I have as a, as a professional. And so I'm so grateful to her for that.
That was great. Right from the beginning, I started developing my leadership style. And it really is true distributive kind of leadership where we share it to really empower people so that they would take ownership. There isn't one teacher, I always say to them, there's a joke. Okay, this is your first year teaching, but after this year, you're going to be in charge of something. So think about what you want to be in charge of. It's our school. She came to me and said, you know, Dana, I think you're ready. I think you're ready to be a school leader. And she pushed me to go back to school to get my leadership license. So I got another master's in school administration. And now I am currently the assistant principal here at PS51. So I would not be sitting in this chair having this conversation with you had it not been for Ms. Ingbach and all of her support and encouragement and kind of seeing the potential in me because sometimes you need someone else to kind of encourage you. You don't see it in yourself and she just made me feel super confident and ready for the job. There's STEM, but in this school we do STEAM. STEAM is a acronym for science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. Woo! I did it. Um, so it's really the integration of all those different content areas. It's gone beyond, beyond my expectations because I had the teacher come to me, Rebecca O'Brien, fourth grade teacher, and last summer she said, you know, I've been taking some courses. I've been doing workshops in STEM. And she said, I'd really like to try out some of these programs, you know, engineering, robotics. I said, okay. It has become so exciting for the students because they just come to me and they'll talk about their designs or what happened when they, when they were throwing the airplanes or something, threw them out the window, and then they had to see whether or not they were going to be able to land. Yeah, the STEM program and the science club has been phenomenal. I'm just beyond excited about having our new rooftop garden. It's been a dream of mine. We could talk about the long journey of PS51, where we were in the old building, and then we had to move to 91st Street for two years. But when we came back here, and we fought so hard, because originally they were just going to give us a small yard. I said, no, 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 no. We need more space here, physical outdoor space. And Christine Quinn's office, you know, did come up with the funding for that. But as soon as I went, the building was ready and we went upstairs, I said, there has to be a garden here. I've been doing the gardening here for the last three years. It's a dream that we've had to get an edible garden going so that eventually the students learn not only about growing food, but harvesting the food and learning about the nutrition and values of organic food. You know, once you put it out to the universe, I feel like it comes back to you. It's like, I'm going to have this garden. That started happening. And then I had a parent who was eight months pregnant who wanted to do a, a Whole Foods grant. So she wrote that. And then someone else said, oh, no, you need a sprinkler system. It all came together. I mean, so all within, I'd say, the planning stage of maybe two years. But as far as it all happening, it just, it's been within this year. That is something that I feel really very, very happy about, that we have this rooftop garden. What do you notice about this radish? It looks like a What do you notice? Okay, hold. What do you hold this? It's innocent. Right? right? It does look like a sausage, right? Ready? Nancy Simbach, without your support and love for our students' well-being, this could not have happened. Throughout the years, your desire to provide the students with the best possible, you encourage not only your staff, but the members of this community to realize the power of commitment, unity, diversity, and social responsibility. Thank you. PS51 Students Rooftop Garden. We would like to acknowledge and thank the Durst Organization for their generous donation and the McEnroe Organic Farm for their contribution in making this garden a reality. It is with great honor and pride that we present this beautiful garden to Principal Nancy Simbach in recognition for her support in making all of this possible. 
We are forever grateful and we would also like to thank all who helped in making this garden what it is today. Thank you from the students of PS51. grateful that I've been a principal you know it's just you can't ask for a better job I mean with all the ups and downs and everything I just love coming to work every day and I just love the children I love my teachers my staff I have incredible parents and just being part of um, of a community it's, it's just it's you know just it's it's we're like a family we really are um, you know, we really are together and we, and that's really, I feel very grateful for that because I feel that, um, some people don't even experience that, you know, and it's been, it's been a gift. It really has been a gift to be able to be creative. And, you know, I think I frighten people sometimes at the beginning of the year when I have my initial staff meetings, I say, well, you know what? I'm thinking this year we should do mindfulness. I took a course and I think that would be real. I think kids would really benefit from that. All of us. And they go, oh boy, here she goes again. <laughs> but, you know, that's the fun part about being a principal. You could sort of make all that happen. <laughs> Which is great.